Hello everyone and welcome! In the last couple of weeks I have been doing the valve clearances on my car. Uh, some of you might have noticed on previous videos that the engine wasn't running really that great. It uh, sounded very tappity so I thought I would do something about it. Also having the correct valve clearances does help uh, in terms of uh, tuning up uh, the engine when it comes to carbs and so on and timing so you needed to get all uh, that in the right order. I have never done valve cleanses in my life so this was a very first for me. I had to do a lot of reading and uh, watching some other videos on uh, how to do it so I thought I would share my own experience from someone that has never done it before and hopefully explain it to someone that also has never done valve cleanses on this engine either. So here it is, the mighty M10 engine, von Falkenhausen's masterpiece that was in production from 1962 right up to 1988, 26 years. It equipped the very first generation of the newer class cars starting in 1500cc form and then moving up to 1802 litres. It equipped not only the newer class, which was the predecessor of the E12. It also equipped the uh, very famous O2, the first generation of the uh, BMW E9 Coupe, the 2000 CS. It equipped the basic versions of the E12, then E21, then also the basic version of the E28, the 518i, and the E30 as well. Actually, this last incarnation, the last incarnation of this engine was on the basic version of the BMW E30, the 316, um, only 316, which uh, had a single carb. 1500 cc blocks of the N M10 engine were also used to power the Brabham BT52 Formula One car back in 1983, and that helped Nelson Piquet to earn his second Formula One championship. That was 40 years ago, blimey. Anyway, um, so what you're going to look is the couple of videos that I've made on the last couple of weeks of me doing the valve clearance. Uh, this is already the finished product-ish. Um, give a bit of a clean. It's not completely um, done. I need to tidy this up, but I'll do it at a later stage when uh, uh, I do uh, more jobs here on the engine bay. So I did everything to the best of my knowledge, uh, consulting uh, not only the BMW manual, which tells you how to adjust the tappets, unbelievably car manuals don't do that sort of stuff these days, and also the uh, Brooklyn's auto book, which was very good in uh, um, explaining on how to do it. So let's go and have a look. Okay, so it's time to do the thing that I've been dreading to do for quite some time, and that's doing the valve clearances. Um, I have to unbolt these six um, nuts and then that screw over there but before I have to uh, make sure I have all of this nice and clean because I don't want any debris to go inside the engine and um, some idiot thought it was a good idea to use sealant instead of using the proper gasket actually unfortunately it's not the only evidence of um, uh, silicon sealant that I've seen around uh, this engine so at least that will be one thing that will be going and i've got my cup of coffee as well to keep me company incidentally from the river 200 from 400 owners club uh, i don't have a river 200 uh, my dad used to have one i had one uh, many years back as well and i do hope to own one at some point so Let's get started. And a small brush for the least accessible places. I have to say, I got all these brushes from Lidl. They actually do very good promotions when it comes to car tools. And I certainly don't miss one. And some corrosion. If you are one of those people that don't have a compressor, I'll just use one of these. Uh, 
Whoops. Should have paid more attention to that one. So I've done several things in this car and I haven't found seized bolts. Okay, this one I probably can brush and reuse at some point. Right. I don't think there is any more residue. I've brushed off everything I could. Here we are. Hmm. Yeah, you can see bits of the uh, silicon gasket. I hope some of it hasn't made into the engine. I really hope. Then you uh, unplug all the uh, HT leads plus the ignition coil lead and also remove the spark plugs in order to turn the engine a little bit more easily. Now uh, there are other methods in order to make the engine to rotate. If you have a manual you can uh, uh, put the car in fourth or in fifth if your car has a fifth gear and then handbrake off and then uh, move the uh, car f uh, back and forth in order to remove for the um, for the engine to turn on the next rotation but uh, you can also use it by bumping the start uh, but I find that just unnecessarily really so what I'm going to do I'm going to use this whoops number 30 socket and I'm going to rotate uh, the engine on the crank pulley I'm going to show you in a second and then rotate until I reach top that center of cylinder one and the top that center um, I know when it will reach when it uh, the three timing marks match each other there will be one which will be here on the cra on the camshaft pulley which will match the center of the oil rail then uh, there is one in here where this needle is matches the crank pulley mark and another one on the f on the gearbox the flywheel inspection there's that little notch there that will match what this means is that the um, um, top that center on cylinder one uh, is reached and both valves are closed the simplest way to do the adjustment on this car is doing on the compression stroke and then on the firing order. This is a four-cylinder engine, so the firing order is one, three, four, two. Which means that I do the first one and I adjust the valves on the inlet and exhaust. Then on, I turn the engine uh, by 180 degrees on the pulley which means 90 degrees on the cam sprocket and it's the turn to do the th uh, the inlet and exhaust valves and then another turn on the engine 180 on the crank 90 on the cam pulley and I do the ones on the fourth and then another 90 degrees in here which corresponds to 180 on the crank I'll do the number two the easiest way uh, to do it uh, as I found and that's where it comes on the, uh, the auto book uh, that I've bought a while ago and also on the BMW manual <laughs> car manuals these days don't tell you how to do half of the stuff and it's very easy so when it's TDC on the cylinder one both valves are closed and then the 
ones on the opposite cylinder, which means the number four, they will be on the overlap. So how do you know that the valves on the cylinder are closed? That's because the follower is touching the lowest part of the cam loaf. You know the roundy bit, which is the opposite of the pointy bit on the cam loaf? Yeah, the roundy bit, that's the lowest point. If both of them are uh, touching, that means, that means that both valves are closed. That's when you adjust uh, the, um, uh, the eccentrics. Also, it is um, convenient to know that you should do this when the engine is cold and the specifications for this engine are very much the same for any other M10 engine. Basically, it is um, between uh, 0 0.15 millimeters to 0 0.20 millimeters or 0 0.26 to 0 0.08 um, inches. And But I'm going to use the highest setting because this is actually quite an old engine and they recommend to use the, uh, the the bigger gap for the older engines but we're just going to go through that uh, once again one well, when I uh, start to do the adjustments so you can see in here that the timing mark on the camshaft it matches the center of the oil rail also you can see although it's a little bit there is a mark on the flywheel itself which matches that mark inside the casing and the notch on the crank pulley matches with this marking needle so this means that the engine is at TDC where the cam followers, these are the followers, are at the lowest point of the cam lobes. And when, and that means that the both valves are closed. And when both of these valves are closed, that means that the opposite cylinder, which is number four, is on the overlap. You can see that both the followers are reaching the top of the cam lobes. And therefore, what I'm going to do now is to adjust these. I'm not sure how these don't seem to be too bad. But nevertheless, these should be between 0 0.6 and 0. Point, uh, sorry, 0 0.06 and 0 0.08 thousandths of an inch. One top tip that I found is that to put a little bit of oil on the filler gauges because it sometimes it helps to slide them uh, more easily. Now, I use uh, one of these um, bent uh, filler gauges. For this engine, it's much easier to uh, check. Now, let's see. It's actually quite tight. Let's see this one here. Okay, and this is 0 0.06. Okay, this might need a minor adjustment then. So what I'm going to do is to use a ring spanner, number 10 ring spanner and open the eccentric so the eccentric is this bit here and it is called the eccentric because uh, it, uh, its center is actually off center of the circle so hopefully these won't be too tight oh actually not too bad and then slide in the 0 0.08 0.008 sorry and then use you can use a coat hanger or use one of these thin allen keys okay this will probably okay 
Okay, and now I'm going to tighten it, but not too much. And hopefully these won't be too tight. Oh, actually, not too bad. And then using Okay, this side here. Here. And I'm going to do is to tighten it to make sure that this doesn't move. But do not over tighten these because these otherwise can snap and it will be a nightmare. Now I'm going to do this one here. Okay, so that's the number one done. Now I'm going to do another turn of the engine that will be 180 degrees at the crank, 90 degrees at the cam. And that means that the um, number three will be in the same condition as, sorry, uh, the number three will be, uh, the both valves will be closed and the ones on the overlap according to the book the number two so these will be on the overlap and these will be where it will be closed on the lowest end of the cam load so as you can see here these two on the cylinder number three which is next they are on the lowest end of the cam loop and the opposite cylinder will be on the overlap. You see, these are already starting to overlap here. I'm going to adjust these ones here. They seem to be pretty tight actually, so I was, I'm wondering if uh, uh, these were probably too tight. That's why they were probably making noise. These are just a bit of fine tuning as well. Okay, number three done. Now it is, I'm going to turn the engine another 90 degrees, which means that uh, these two will be uh, closed and the opposite one will be the number one. These will be on the overlap and these will be closed. So these two are closed 
and these now here are on the um, overlap as you can see here both lobes are pointing upwards and this one the lobes are pointing down and now the next one will be the number two so when i rotate the number two it will be the number three that will be on the overlap number nine see if it's too tight now number nine does not fit I can just do a final tightening of this one Well, that's it. That's how it was done. I haven't uh, actually had a chance to uh, test it really because I have to. Uh, there's so many other things I have to do to this uh, car. I still have to sort out the ignition cables. These ones are not the appropriate uh, ones. Uh, I have to uh, check the um, chain tensioner, which is not in great condition, and then I have to do the carb reveal because they are in a complete mess they are very filthy inside and then I don't think they have ever been rebuilt in the last uh, nearly 50 years so there you go thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on the next video take care